I'm here. What's up? So for our project for the bibliography, I was trying to get one of the books that I read, but I couldn't find it on the catalog. Okay. And I was wondering if which could, one? It was for ancient Japanese uh, history. Yeah. Yeah. What, was it a big book? Or a small book? It was like a big book. Was it? Okay, so I'm going to record this so that in, we can also post this afterwards if anything happens. Okay, awesome. So I'm going to start with our, okay, <laughs> there we go. So our traditional indigenous acknowledgement, I just wanted to introduce a student at my school, Timber Johnson, you can wave your hand, there you go. Um, she's a graduate student from Salish and what happened at our school is that our English teachers actually got the students to write um, acknowledgements. And I thought it'd be great to have uh, Timber do the acknowledgement today rather than me doing it because I think it's more meaningful to, and impactful to have a student be doing it. So I'm gonna let um, Timber take over. Hi, can you just go to the next? Oh, thank you. There you go. Um, no, I'm so sorry. It didn't turn out. It looked way better. Mm, one sec. I'm going to stop sharing my screen because I don't know why that happened. Uh, um, I have it pulled up here. Too. Oh, do you? Okay, hold on. Let me see if I can share this one. Is maybe if I continue here, it'll be on the maybe it'll be better on the browser. So let's just take a look. Let's see if this one works better. There, is that better? Yes. Yes, okay. To cherish knowledge is to know wisdom. To know love is to know peace. To honor all of creation is to have respect. Bravery is to face the foe with integrity. Honesty also means righteousness. Be honest first with yourself in word and action. Humility is to know yourself as a sacred part of the creation. Truth is to know all of these things. These are the seven sacred teachings that some indigenous tribes have adopted as a base of their communities, beliefs, and values. I think these teachings are very important to being good to yourself and others throughout your life. I hope that these seven sacred teachings resonate with you like they resonate with me, and that you'll think of including them into your own practice. With that, I welcome you to love, learn, and play on the shared, unceded traditional territory of the Keitsi, Semiamu, Kwantlen, and Coast Salish nations. Perfect. Thank you so much, Timber. So this is what she's been doing at our school um, and other classmates that they do at our school and the PA when we do the Indigenous um, land acknowledgements uh, on Mondays. And I think that's really nice that she actually she, she made this all herself. And um, I thought I'd share that with you guys. So that might be something that you might want to bring back to your schools and share with your teachers and students. All right. Thank you, Timber. I know you got to go. So we're going to say bye. <laughs> And then we're going to continue. Okay. There we go. And I think I saw Ravinder pop in um, earlier. Hi, Ravinder. Hi, how are you guys doing? Good. So Ravinder is the foods teacher from my school as well, obviously. I, I definitely look for people in my in my area that I can ask for help. Um, so for the upcoming Asian Heritage Month, uh, we thought about what we could do to kind of highlight um, things that are happening. And Ravinder at my school is the foods teacher, but she's also the lady that makes the chai tea or the chai at our school for all the events that we have. And it's so awesome. And I thought, oh, 
I think it'd be great if she made a video of her making this because this would be something that you guys can show to your class or just watch for your own personal interest. Because for me, it was definitely personal interest because I, I never knew how to make it, obviously. And now that I've learned, I'm so excited <laughs> to try it on my own. And it's, it's not as scary as I thought it was, you know? It's, it can be super easy if I wanted it to be. Um, so Ravinder, I don't, the, the, the video itself is about 10 minutes long. And I'm not sure how sharing a video works on Zoom, like how choppy or smooth it can be. Um, so I don't think I will be sharing the entire video, but I thought maybe I'll share the beginning and see if it works. And if not, we'll just like stop it. And then we'll just talk, we'll just continue with our conversation. Is that okay? Yeah, that works, yeah. Okay, so let me see if I can actually... Just forget, uh, just, just don't forget to uh, add sound because you have to actually share sound when you share a video. If oh, really? Yeah, if you don't um, set up that option, we won't hear anything. Okay, can you see the YouTube right now? Yes. Okay, so how do I add some? Oh, so now I have to unshare and share again then. <laughs> okay. Sorry, everybody, bear with me. I don't use Zoom as often as I use other things. Okay, so share screen, um, share sound, aha, share sound, optimize for video clip. Ah, these wonderful options. And this one here, and then I'm gonna share that. Okay, so I'm gonna maximize the screen. And I'm going to try playing. OK, so I'm going to tell you guys, I am an amateur <laughs> video editor. <laughs> don't, don't be mad if it's not as good as you intended to be, because I tried my best to do a good video. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is Ravinda here. So I'm going to teach you secondary. So today, talk about some basic things about Snipey before I actually make it. So what I'm going to talk about today is first in the, as far as I know, uh, British came in and then the tree was introduced. Um, the tree, um, it's grown in um, gardens in Assam in India, which is a kind of hilly area around. Um, it's grown there, it's, uh, all the leaves are picked and then they're dried and everything and it's packaged and sent it everywhere, right? Uh, in the beginning, people wouldn't drink tea that much, okay? So in the beginning, it was just the thing for British people and then they wanted to introduce to other normal people so that they can actually sell and make money and other stuff like all the business kind of people and everything. So what they, my dad used to say, my dad is, 75 years old now. So he was that when they were little, and they used to live in a village there. So when they were little, then the people, um, like there will be a cart coming into a village with some chai tea made. And then the people, like the cart person will say to other people, villagers around, okay, come, 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 grab tea. And people wouldn't drink it because they were so used to drinking, I'll say normal things like water, pure milk, and those kind of things they'll add sugar to the milk and just drink it that way rather than drinking tea. Tea was not considered to be a good drink at that time. Um, so they wouldn't drink it and then they were, oh, they're not even drinking, we're bringing it in. So what they did was they'll bring some cookies with them. So those people will bring cookies with them. They'll say, okay, you're gonna get these cookies if you try this tea, chai tea, right? So they made them do it that way and slowly, slowly, slowly cookies make everything, right? So slowly later on, the people were okay, so we're gonna drink and then you get used to it afterwards, right? So that's how the tea, chai tea started in a normal people, like middle, middle class or lower class people, this is how it started there. Um, so, and now there are so many different varieties of chai tea up there. So today what I'm gonna do, make a basic chai tea, okay? So for this chai tea, there are some things we need obviously. There's water, which I have already in. And for me, when I make it, many people make it many different ways, so nothing is right till you figure out like which kind of taste you like, okay? So you have for me, when I make it, I make it with equal amount of water and milk. I usually use 2%, some people say, oh, it's not good. With 2%, they use the 3 or 
person, when they make it in India, it's usually buffalo's fresh milk, which is usually six to seven percent in there. Okay, so it's a heavy, heavy milk. Um, that makes it taste great too. So we have one cup of milk and uh, water in there. My milk is up here, which I covered up for something. Okay, so this milk I'm gonna use it later on. And then you need some sugar. Then you're gonna need some chai tea. So chai tea comes in different, different things up there. So this one is the basic one I have in my hand. Some people will have it, um, like this is the darker and stronger one I have. Some people will have the lighter one. Some even come with the different uh, masalas or spices added in them already. Okay, so the one I'm using here is the Sorry, I just wanted to pause um, because I don't want to show the whole video just in case it takes too much time. And I know you guys can watch the rest on your own. Um, but it's great because Ravinder talks about her background and knowledge about it. And then she starts um, actually showing us how she makes it. And then she talks about the spices. So I think you can get the gist of the video from here. Um, I just wanted to ask, I guess, um, ask you guys, did you want to watch the whole video or should we continue um, with the next parts? Tammy, I think maybe you could tell us what the next part might be so we can choose. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, the next part um, is what um, Ravinda is going to talk about some of the projects she's done um about uh, the heritage uh she does a heritage fair project and i think it's kind of nice to talk about it too okay so everyone's enjoying the presentation video i can continue with it yeah so i'll show the rest of it i think it'll be kind of nice basic one and even the basic ones come in two different kinds okay one is I'll say three different kinds, okay? This one is the round pouches. They go in this pot and then you make them and throw it away before you actually eat this, right? Or drink this. Second is the dip tea, right? So you have a string attached to it like other teas you have. Third is open tea. That's what I use at home. So I'll have that one in there and then I usually add one spoon of the chai tea in there and one spoon of sugar in there for me, okay? So I'm gonna add, so water is in here already. So I'm making, see here, I'm making just one cup of water, one cup of uh, milk here, right? So it will be two. So for two cups, I'm just gonna use one pouch. I don't like really, really strong tea, so I'm gonna just use that in there. Um, it will take some time when it starts bubbling, then we're gonna add some other stuff. The milk, uh, the sugar can go now. The sugar depends upon. So for me, I don't drink a lot of sugary stuff nowadays somehow, okay? So even some people will add a little bit of uh, sugar, some people will add a lot of sugar, some will not add any sugar. Okay? It depends upon how you want it. So for me, for two cups, I'm not gonna add more than this. So it's, a, let's say like 10 mils, okay? Even less than 10 mils. So this is being done. So I have it on kind of medium to low. So when it starts bubbling, then I'll add my milk in there, okay? Before I add milk in though, so I'll add the spice. This is the spice, which you can get it from any Indian store. It can be many different kinds in this one too, okay? So for me at home, I do make my own spice. I it's, it's, This one is okay, but not that flavorful. I feel like that, okay? So for that, what I do, I will usually have these spices. So I'm gonna turn this to a little bit lower so that I can talk, okay? So these are the spices I have here, which I add in my own spice blend, okay? This is called black cardamom. So black cardamom is a kind of, they are not cardamom actually, like these are these kinds. Uh, they are very pungent and kind of bitter, okay? So I'll just take one of these and then maybe a spoon of each of other spices. This is cinnamon. Cinnamon usually, I can take powdered, I can, it's a normal cinnamon you guys have. So I can take it um, a powdered one or even the sticks. Sometimes I take a tiny stick of that. These are cloves. So the one cloves you're seeing right now, the ones I have in my hand are from India. 
So my sister-in-law sent it for me. Similar thing with the cardamom. So the cardamom right here I have are from here, okay? Because I can't um, bring in seeds on planes anymore. <laughs> so I used to bring them. So I used to bring the cardamom from India too, but it's banned, so I don't do it anymore. So they were so fresh too, and they were bigger in size even. Um, this uh, is a jivan. This is also called carom seeds, C-A-R-O-M, okay? So carom seeds are, I don't think you'll see them here somewhere. So these are the tiny, tiny seeds. Uh, they are very bitter, okay? I don't eat, add it a much, but they have a really kind, uh, like they have, uh, uh, let's say they have a quality that if you eat them, if your stomach, if you have a stomach ache or something and you can uh, eat these half a spoon of them and then drink, um, let's say, half a glass of water, for me, like it works for, uh, within an hour, your stomach pain will be gone. So this works. So this is a kind of medicine for me, okay? And the, this is fennel, okay? So this is in Punjabi, this is called song. So I wrote these down. So these, all these spices are from my home. Some are in Punjabi written, some are in English written or something. So these are just the song is um, uh, fenugreek uh, seeds I have. So I'll have all of these, one spoon of each plus one of this black cardio, not more than that, okay? And then I mix them up. So I usually use the coffee, coffee grinder, okay? The one coffee grinder at home, I grind them. I don't grind all the stuff, like I don't want to make a huge amount and then the flavor goes away. So I just make, I'll say when it's done, I'll just make it this much. So I just make this much up here. Okay. So when that is made, I keep it like that in these same containers and I usually use half a, let's say two mils, one to two mils of that. That's enough for two cups of tea, chai tea. Okay, so we are back here. So this is bubbling. Uh, you can see the steam coming. So I'm going to add the milk in. Okay, all done. And then for me, I didn't bring the spice which I make at home. So I'm going to just use the one I have here. Uh, let's just put it on such and gas. Okay, just one or two mils. That should be enough. It's not even one mil, but it will work. For it, and also it depends upon how people want it. People, Some people want it really strong. They'll add more chai tea. For me, this is the color I want, so I'll just keep it that way. And uh, yeah, the spice is in. Now it's gonna start bubbling. And then, um, even in the uh, spices and even in the chai tea, you'll find different flavors, like it could be ginger flavored chai tea, it could be cardamom flavored chai tea, it could be uh, spice blend chai tea, like there are so many, cloves chai tea. So those kind of chai teas are all there. And then uh, when it's all done, and this thing here, okay, here we are. So this is the special sector I have for the chai tea. You can easily find it from um, nowadays superstore too, and then uh, from any other stores. This is metal made because it's gonna be really hot. And the, um, this is the must in a household. I have four of them, okay? So we need them. So when we're gonna be doing this, for me especially, because I don't use this uh, these pouches I told you, right? So I use the loose one. So it's easier with that to call loose one too. And even for these, it's gonna be really good for that. Okay, okay so it's made here. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it off now. And then we're gonna pour it in. So this is my sector here. Or the sea, whatever you wanna call. Okay, that's the chai tea in there. Perfect for two people. Now the weather is so nice, so I go out on the porch and I'll bring it there rather. Okay, so this is done. So this golden cream then, and then we put it in. Okay, so now the chai tea is ready. And we're gonna talk about how to drink it now. Okay, sorry. Um, we did have a question, Tammy, about yeah. uh, substituting for the sugar. So um, not everyone likes to use white sugar. So there was a question of, can you use brown sugar or honey instead? Um, I know in my family, my relatives use cane sugar. It's just, it's a slightly different flavor. So it's to taste, but I'm sure Vinder will <laughs> add to that. Yes, um, actually, this is a great time to uh, have Ravinder talk. So Ravinder, what do you think? <laughs> Hello. 
good. Here we are. Okay. Uh, so hi everyone. I feel I don't know how did you like it or not, but uh, we made it, right, Tammy? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there were some questions in there, right? The brown yes. sugar. So mm -hmm. earlier, when it was made, my like my parents when they were little, so then they not they never used the white sugar anyway. So they used to have uh, like they had sugar canes in their farms, and then they'll make the sugar out of it. In the process, the jaggery was made. Okay, the so I think Devika was talking about that too right now. So that jaggery was used in there. Even brown sugar will work, but for me, I don't like that flavor personally. That's why I don't use it. Okay, so it can be anything. And there was one other thing. Was it fennel or fenugreek? It was fennel. These are the fennels that I was using. Uh, there was one other thing about using ginger and black pepper. So I just, when you said ginger and black pepper, it came into my mind. Okay, whenever we have cold, whenever I have cold, when I was little, I had cold. My mom will always be, okay, take this tea with ginger in and then with black pepper in. So you can add basically anything in there, right? So that tea will be really good for you if you have a cold and you can add ginger in there like other teas, right? So that's what it was for that. Is there anything else you guys want to know about? I can't hear anything else. It was awesome. I can't hear. Oh. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It was fantastic. Hey, thank you. It was so yummy. I wanted to drink it. <laughs> yes. And I will send you could ask Tammy to make it for you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I was, I was, I was, uh, you know, after what, after that video being made, I was like, oh my gosh, I am, I can make this. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to put the YouTube link in the chat so that you guys have access to it. Um, and we will also post it um, later. Yeah. Um, so I can question. tell you, sorry, there was a question um, of whether people in India actually make it into ice, um, ice chai, because a lot of people here like to have ice chai. Um, I haven't seen many, like any at that time. Now, maybe with the changes and internet and everything, maybe, but before that, no, chai was always supposed to be warm. Yeah. Now, maybe, I don't know. I don't live there anymore. So now internet is there. They do different tries, right? So now maybe, but not before. Yes. Oh, I also made um, Ravinder's chai recipe on a, as you can see on the screen. So I will be sharing that as well so that you can access it. Um, yes. So back to what I was talking about. Hmm, this, yeah. I'm having a lot of issues with my, my screen. No, I'm not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> this yeah. is me when I can't do what I want to do. Um, yes, so before uh, Ravinder leaves us, I just wanted to ask her to talk about the heritage project that she does uh, with her students in her foods class. I think that's kind of nice to uh, give you guys okay. some ideas possibly to pitch um, to your, your school into doing for Asian Heritage Month, because it, it, not necessarily Asian Heritage Month, but just Heritage Month itself, just talking about heritage. Um, so Ravinda, do you want to share that um, project that you do? Yeah, actually, I call it recipe preservation um, um, thing, let's say that way. And that was not mine. It was my uh, student teachers. Her name is Diana. So thank you, Diana. So she, it was her thing. So it was her idea. So what we do is um, for my grade 11s, it was blended learning and this and that. So I made it up that way that they had to figure out. So they had to brainstorm the ideas or dishes which they actually like and think about those dishes. Then they anything which they have personal connection to. And then they had to interview their elder. So from the elder, they were supposed to figure out, okay, I like this recipe. So they talk to the elder. It was amazing to talk to the elders and listen from the kids, from their point of view, how they felt. So in that elder interview, there's so many things. One is, when did you learn making that recipe? Uh, what were the things around at that time? What kind of equipment or utensils or whatever you had at that time? What are the changes they have done during the times till now to make that recipe? Like those kind of things were there. And then one really important thing was acknowledging them. Plus, taking them per, uh, taking a permission from them to share the recipe with me. Okay, most of them, like, I'll say, all of them were okay. 
just one parent one grandparent was like i am going to share it with you but make sure you don't share it with someone else after so i promised them i wrote a thank you letter and then told them that it is going to be saved with me it's not going to go anywhere else and so the kids were so proud so they got the recipes from them i got the grocers they came in here they actually made those recipes took pictures and sent those pictures to their elders and that it was awesome so that i really like that project which i'll continue to make later on too i did it with grade 11s and 12s so the online blending thing it wasn't working otherwise we were not cooking every day so it worked well so that they had some work to do at home and then they could bring the stuff in yeah so that's what we do and yeah, i don't have anything else to say <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ravinder. Um, yeah, so I, when I heard about the Heritage Project, I thought that would be wonderful to share with you guys because it's kind of nice that students get to go and talk and interview their own family members or elders and then just see what is it that, you know, that you know, they've always eaten and share it with their classmates and things like that. So it really kind of ties into that whole idea of talking to your family and then sharing with others um, a part of your culture. Almost. Yes. So yes, thank you, Ravinder, for sharing with okay, us and of course you. attending and, and <laughs> um, before she leaves, are there any other questions for Ravinder? I have a question, Tammy. It's actually um more of a, a reflection just right now. Um my friend uh, allowed us to invite her mom over just before COVID last year, and she taught us how to make five Indian dishes, and it was so awesome. And we took photos so I'd remember what we did and how how she cooked was just by by taste and there was nothing, no recipe written down. It was so fun. And it made me think like you guys made this 10 minute video. Wouldn't it be cool to have kids make videos with their parents about them cooking things and then show them through Zoom or show them through their to their class so we could learn through the knowledge keepers from various different um cultures in the classroom before the kids forget because like my friend doesn't know how to cook any indian food it's brutal mm -hmm. but but we learn from her mom so i think you know we don't want it to skip a generation so thank you for doing that yeah. yeah that's such a good idea it gives me an idea for my next projects too yeah that's <laughs> really good yeah yeah otherwise we don't preserve things so for me my mom so my mom is not here anymore. So her recipes, some of the recipes, I don't even know how to cook because she was so far away. And then I was here. Then sometimes on phone, I'll ask her, but it was never the same the way she made. So if I could note it at that time, it would have been so much easier now. And you remember those people afterwards that way too then, right? So yeah, yeah, good idea. Thank you. Yes, that is a good idea. And I, I agree because Oh, Holly has her hand raised. All right, Holly, you want to chime in? I just wanted to piggyback on Donnie's idea because in the start of COVID last year, we had a student at our school who ended up doing exactly that. And he had his grandma, who is from India, who made YouTube videos and they were so popular with the class. And he was a student who had special needs. And this was something that was so awesome and everyone loved it. And his grandma became a YouTube star. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You never know what's going to happen, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to say bye to Ravinder because I know I don't want to keep you any longer. But thank you so much for sharing with us. I just wanted to mention one last thing is that there's actually a part two to this video where um, Ravinder talks about how um, how they how they serve the tea. So like, um, in what situations do they drink it and what are the utensils and stuff like that. But due to the video being too long, I will be posting a second one in case them if you want to see part two of the video. Okay, so I'm gonna continue. Okay, thank you, bye. Bye, Ravinder. Um, I thought maybe we can use this moment to break out into um, rooms for just like a quick talk and kind of share some ideas. So Ravinder, the, the whole tea, the whole idea that filming the tea and her heritage project. So I thought maybe this is a great time to do a, a quick, short breakout to kind of share with other people some ideas that you may have had and a time to kind of talk to other people. Okay, so I'm going to, okay, so you guys have to bear with me. I'm going to learn how to like do breakout rooms now.
I had a meeting on Tuesday and I had to do breakout rooms on Teams. I was scared of that too. And now, how do I do this? You might need to stop sharing your screen first. Okay, yeah, I, I figured because I was like, there's something <laughs> stopping me from doing things. <laughs> um, okay, thank you. Let's see what I can do. No, that is the wrong button. Don't press that. Um, it's an icon at the bottom of your screen next to the record button. Oh, there it is. I see it. Okay, great. I'm going to assign automatically. Wait, I'll let people, yeah, we'll sign it automatically. And I'll have eight breakout rooms. Okay, so I'll see you guys back in a, probably about five minutes or so. All right. Okay. Are we in the room together? Jessica? Is it Bill? Not joined. Ah, uh, okay. So Tammy, shout out to you for like getting Ravinda to make chai at the beginning of the presentation. It was just so amazing to have like, you know, just to be having different cultures being honored in that way and starting um, starting our presentations in such a gentle, loving kind of a way. So I love that. That was awesome. Oh, good. I'm glad. <laughs> I wasn't sure how the video would work, but it looks like everyone was able to watch it and it turned out okay, so I'm happy about that. Yeah, did you guys share any ideas yet? Um, we're just going through, Cam wanted to say something first. Um, Leslie, do you wanna say anything? You're just next on my row of people. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, I just wanted to share, um, our district uses Destiny and um, we're, we're transitioning over to Destiny to discover more and more. And so I've been using some of the collections in there and um, I just, you know, I always show what I'm doing to the students. And I was like, oh, and, and I've made this collection for Asian Heritage Month. I haven't shared it yet uh, nice. because it's not until March. And one of the students was really excited. She's like, how long has this been a thing? And I was like, well, it's been around since the nineties, but we don't really acknowledge it. So I'm making a point of doing it. She's like, that's a good thing. So she was really excited um, to even hear about it. So hopefully some of the resources will be used from the collection. Nice. Darcy, did you want to share anything? Um, I also, our school also, our district just started using Destiny Discover and that's what I was going to share too. I, I came here for more ideas, um, but I have also created a collection. I've also been focusing on diversity, doing a diversity audit this year. And so one of my big goals was to increase the diversity. Um, in, sorry about that dinging, somebody's texting me, um, to increase the diversity in my library. And so I have already purchased a lot of titles um, featuring Asian characters. Um, so outside of doing the collection and then creating the display in the library, um, 
I was looking for other ideas, especially because I only have class. I, I don't, library is not a prep here. So I have the teacher and they're only here for 35 minutes and it also includes book exchange. So I was looking for other ideas that we could do for Asian Heritage Month as well. Yeah, nice, I like that. Sometimes um, displays, if you can keep one up for a few weeks of books, um, yeah. like an Asian people's history book, book um, display. Are you taking the um, School Library Journal diversity audit right now? Um, it was with, um, I did the Pro D in October with- Oh, um, Rebecca Rubio. Rebecca Rubio. Yeah, good, okay, great. That series again. Perfect. Yeah, and then we also have been focusing on it as a teacher librarian association in our district. Sorry, I don't know how to shut off the texting on my computer, so I'm sorry. Can you guys hear that dinging? Yes. I'm so sorry. I don't even know why okay. that started recently. It's a new thing, so sorry about I'm, that. I'm gonna go pop into other rooms, but- Okay, thanks, Cami. We're almost done, I'm, I'm sure. Yes. Okay. So, hi there. <clears throat> Sorry, <laughs> I didn't know I was muted. <laughs> um, I thought I'd just pop in and say hi and see how things are going. Good. Any special ideas? I heard from another group that they were creating collections on Destiny. Oh, okay. We were talking about, um, I was talking about maybe having the foods teacher next month, bring in a couple of people from the community to do demos or serving chai in the library. Yeah, that would be totally fun. So I was thought I could maybe talk to Ravinder about how to make big batches, right? Oh yes, she does it a lot very often because our, our school, um, when we have like staff meetings or all kinds of fun stuff, uh, not staff meetings, sorry. She only does it on special occasions. I've never heard of staff meetings being called fun stuff, but anyway. <laughs> so not the staff meetings, but like some of the more fun things, like sometimes we do coffee and tea on Fridays. Um, hope, um, so she would make a big batch for that. Yeah, definitely. Do you have restrictions on people coming in? Like we were talking oh, yeah. about. No one can come in now. <laughs> no one can come in. Oh, okay. Uh, no, sorry. Our school too. Yeah. Like no one from outside can come into our school. Yeah. Mm. Okay. okay, I'm going to leave because I'm going to bring everyone back, okay? Okay. Nice to meet you guys. Nice. You already came back. <laughs> you're going to break us out. So I thought we were supposed to come back. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, they've been given 60 seconds. So. Oh, my I didn't poor, realize. My poor people. I'm still trying to figure out how this like um, breakout rooms work. Apparently, it gives a message, a notice for 60 seconds before people get kicked back. <laughs> oh, okay. And here I'm, I'm like, oh crap, I better give them a message before I kick them out of the rooms. It's a little bit different with Teams. Um, uh, back to, nope, that's not the one. This is the one. Um, great. So we are back. That's the chai recipe we'll be posting on the BCTLA website. Um, and, uh, I hope you guys had a great sharing session, um, and that, you know, some of these ideas you might want to bring back to your schools to do. Um, I'm going to now switch up. Okay. My, like, seriously? Okay. <laughs> I finished my presentation. <laughs> Sorry, guys. As you can tell, some days things don't work with me. Um, the next up is actually Donnie. She's going to be taking over. She's from, uh, you're going to talk a little bit about your tea time book? Oh, yeah. Just just a few seconds because I realize it's almost oh, yeah, yeah. I just, um, can you, oh, Sorry. There, I hope you can see. Um, I just, when we first started planning this series of webinars uh, a few months ago, I thought I need a book about tea. And I love this one. Um, both the author and illustrator are Canadian. I think one of them is actually from Vancouver, Denise at YVR on Twitter. 
And um, it just lists all of the uh, ways that tea is enjoyed around the world. And um, I, I'm a tea lover, a tea granny. I have all kinds of tea. I actually make my own chai like Ravinder and I was happy to see I was doing most things right. Um, talks about new kinds of tea like iced tea and bubble tea. And I just thought it was really great for acknowledging the importance of tea culture around the world and how you know we're more alike than we are different and the differences we have are making things super cool and interesting so kids books 20 bucks i was really happy to get it awesome yes and and that the whole point of donnie talking about tea time around the world is to spur the next um breakout time is that now i hope most of you uh, brought something that you wanted to share with others um, Donnie shared her book. And if you have something to share, that's great. If you don't have something to share, not the end of the world. It's just a nice time to kind of talk and talk with other people too. Um, and then seeing what they come up with. All right. All right. I'm gonna, mm -hmm. he said, stop sharing. And honestly, to be frank, this is just so I can learn how to use Zoom. <laughs> I'm going to recreate these rooms. Oh, see, I can even create new rooms recreate and then i'm gonna open cool so i'll see you guys all in a bit oh tammy oh yes sorry i accidentally pressed not now <laughs> so i don't sorry? know what i accidentally pressed not now like it says oh okay um uh, Let's see, Ruth. Let me see which room which room you were supposed. It was three. To, you know, I think. I'll throw you in. All good. Thank you. Three, four, seven. Are you there tomorrow? Hi, looks like you didn't go to, oh, okay, she's going to, okay, great. <laughs> Okay, I did my practicum there. Oh, nice. I'm from Duncan originally. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I did my practicum at Mount Provo when it was still an English school. Yeah, it's a, a French immersion elementary now. Yeah, and I probably did my practicum before you were even in, um, in high school. So a very <laughs> long time ago. <laughs> what, what year was it? Uh, 1993. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, so... I would, I probably know some of the teachers that, uh, my, my husband started teaching at Provo in 2000. Yeah. So probably a lot of the same teachers were there. Probably. Yeah. 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 So you might recognize the library then. 
Uh, maybe. But now it has been, been like 27 years. <laughs> yeah. It's been a long time. So, so we should be sharing some books. Yes. Okay. Um, I do have one. I'll just go. <clears throat> Jennifer. Hi. I haven't seen you for a while. Yeah, that's because, you know, my day job oh. <laughs> cuts into my stuff. <laughs> yeah. My day job cuts into everything. Yeah. I was saying that um, I've already spent 35 hours in my chair this in the last three days. So not counting today. So. Can I tell you about a book that we were just sharing in this other? Oh, she's got, oh, I've got that one. Okay, cool. You go, you go, you got, you're going to do this one? No, no, no. I just want to hear oh, about cool. it. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. So this one, because I don't know about you, but um, my students are devouring graphic novels. Um, mm -hmm. So I was also trying to find some graphic novels that um, had Asian authors or that sort of thing. So Dragon Hoops has been really popular, especially because it's about the topic of basketball. basketball. Yeah. yeah yeah so that's been um one book that we've really enjoyed um yeah. i want to share that and it's it's a, a good it's a good read too like it's mm -hmm. you know yeah, yeah. So that's one right there um i have other ones but like i said they're in our i don't know about your district but in our district we're not allowed to process books oh and, no, um, yeah we have it's a qp job and we had we have to send them away and so also too, because we've just moved over to Destiny Discover this year and we've had a lot of nightmares transitioning. Oh. Our district isn't processing any books this year either. So oh, no. none of my books are processed. And so I have, this is how I lend them out this year. <laughs> it's like lots of sticky notes. Oh my God. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, so um, the new ones. So this has been borrowed a number of times, but as you can see, it's not processed at all, so. I have lots and lots of other ones, but I'd have to go dig them out of boxes to try to find them. Oh. Yeah. So usually with the new ones that I've bought, um, like for Asian Heritage Month, I'll put the new ones on display for the mm -hmm. intermediates. I'm not doing it for the primaries. I don't bring <coughs> brand new books home with primaries. Yeah. Unfortunately, but for the intermediates, I am putting all the books out in bins and I only take the bins out when the intermediates are in the library and I tell them that it's a special loan which gets them excited too, because they can take a book out before it has a barcode on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nice. It's very resourceful. Yeah. Um, I haven't read the whole thing. I've done like a five finger read, but I um, have the. to bubble up. So Rachel wonders if she's strong enough to be a winner or if she'll end up being crushed, especially when she begins to develop feelings for K-pop star and DB golden boy, Jason Lee. So, you know, it's that kind of love story and um, figuring out who you are and, but it has a Korean um, uh, background. And so I think when we were doing our diversity and inclusion um, um, workshop, we were having trouble getting other resources. Remember, Christy, that sort of um, extended past um, the the ones that we had for Black Lives Matter, basically. And um, so that was one that I did find. Um, what grade do you recommend that for? Um, you know, it's kind of I would say probably grade nine, ten. Up. Yeah. So she's seventeen. The main the main character is seventeen in the book. So. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I was just thinking if there was anything else. How about this one? So Asian History oh. Month covers all of Asia, right? And so Syria, uh, I, we just uh, put up in our uh, display a map uh, that we found on the government web website or links from the government website. Anyway, Holmes is a story um, from a um, Syrian boy who moved to Alberta and it's it starts off with his life um, before moving um, but it's a refugee story and has a bit on adapting to life in Canada and the challenges that are there so yeah that's that's one that 
I had on display. So sorry. No, that's great. You know what? Um, just as you brought that forward and it had the Canada Reads on it, uh, Bread mm -hmm. from um, a couple of years ago was one of the other ones that um, uh, was highlighted in the five top ones, Bread and Bone. And that one has an, um, an Indian um, background. Okay. Thank you. So I, again, don't have the book here to show you, um, but I would also recommend, uh, it's called Be the Change, A Grandfather Gandhi Story. And again, this is a, um, is a picture book. Uh, I don't know about other districts, but we were a smart learning district for quite a while. And sort of that habit of taking a book, a picture book and chunking it into four or five chunks and really processing the story all the way through is um, something we do quite a bit in this district looking at the images and the story. Um, and so this is one that we purchased for each of our elementary libraries. What I loved about this story is that it, um, it talked about, um, uh, oh gosh, I'm gonna get the, the term wrong, but sort of that um, like hidden violence that comes from uh, resource, lack of resources, right? And so really that emphasis on we need to be preserving um, the environment. We need to be mindful about how much waste because the more that we waste, the more resources become um, restricted and the more resources become restricted. This is where we see that trickle down effect of um, you know, oppression and, and whatnot from first world to third world because we're looking for those, um, those resources. And so it walks this, the, um, the story goes through a young child not being pleased with their pencil because it's getting small and tossing it. And then the repercussions and the learning from there and the web of um, you know, what happens when we, when we look at things at the world through the lens of wastefulness and, uh, and disposability. And it actually ends at the end of the book with, um, with the pledge, right? That you can talk to students about, they can sign about, um, you know, being mindful around sustainability, et cetera. So, uh, so I really like that book. And again, it was one of the ones that we, we made sure went to, to each school library so that um, teachers can have that to, to work with their students. Sounds like a book you could use quite easily at the secondary. Just waiting for everyone to come back. I was like, is there only five people here? Oh my gosh. <laughs> they're coming, they're coming. You guys there we go. <laughs> You're doing such a good job, Tammy. 
Thank you. Through my blunderings. <laughs> when I do this, there's usually like, you know, a lot of people and, uh, and then I make a mistake in front of a lot of people, so. Well, I, I really, I, I like the idea of the breakout rooms because we got to meet a few um, different people. So I met one person from library in Prince George and it was Duncan and ooh, that was nice. Nice. Yeah, I just thought it's nice to give people time to talk in small groups because when we're all together, we're not really all chatting, right? Mostly listening. Um, Tammy, are we doing another Google document where we're all sharing our resources? Yes. Yes. I was going to say because obviously I didn't get my act together. <laughs> I didn't think far ahead enough. You want me to create one right now? Um, I was going to say, did you guys want to put your... Um, books in the chat and I'll save the file and I'll put it into a Google Doc. Oh, okay. Do you Does mind if I jump in, Tammy? Yes, please. If, if you want, if um, Dev creates one, I can actually just send it out to all participants and then- I was going to put in the link. <laughs> so oh, there we go, for sure. I was going to put it all in the Google Doc and then send it out. So I didn't want to have everyone, anyway. <laughs> oh, you're so good. <laughs> I always think of the hard way to do things, not the easy way. Um, but it looks like some people have actually added to the chat about books. Um, oh yeah, Marilyn, Marilyn. See, Marilyn's already on top of her game, and so it's been, so they've already added stuff. Or is that from my previous chat? Okay, awesome. um, so Davika is going to create a quick Google Doc link so that everyone can type in their um the sharing material so like whatever books or resources that you shared so that we can actually share this with each other afterwards does that what sound was the diversity one called because maybe i can just um copy it <laughs> oh i don't know uh, is it in the website hold on i think i found it okay good as you can tell i don't always do presentations so i'm not uh not prepared for that <laughs> You're doing a fabulous job. This is oh, great. that's happening. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to do a wrap up. <laughs> so that we, while that's happening on the side, um, they, I want to talk about the prizes that you can win. We're going to um, do a draw for two winners. And the two winners will get a copy of Tea Around the World, which is uh, the book that Donnie um, shared with us earlier. And then, of course, your own chai starter kit. And when I say your own chai starter kit, hold on, let me get it. <laughs> um, what that is, is that Ravinder helped me get a little box of tea bags. Um, she says these ones are the dip tea, but it works just the same. Um, a box of the spices, so it's easy, easy to make. And of course, she said because her story talked about her dad and how the British entice people to drink tea with cookies, there's also a little package of cookies to go with it. <laughs> um, so that's what we're going to be drawing for. Um, Let's see, doo, doo, doo. I'm going to pull up the list of participants. We have 21 people right now. Um, I'm going to ask someone to draw a number. So I'm gonna ask, Christy, can you give me a number between one and 21? Thirteen. Thirteen, okay, and then I'm gonna look, I'm gonna count. C, 13. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Lindsay! Lindsay Ward is our first winner. Let me write that down before I forget. Lindsay Ward. And then the next person I'll ask, um, I would like a number here. How about you, Sarah? You have your mic. Uh, unmuted. Give me a number between 1 to 21. 
six. Six? Yes. Right. Uh, Elena. Elena's iPhone 11. <laughs> oh, that's uh, Elena Miller. Wow. Okay. Oh, thank you. Perfect. So I don't know where you guys are. All right. Uh, but if you would mind sending um, me an email, and then we can uh, ship everything to you. Sounds good? Yeah. That's great. Thank you. I'm going to put it in the chat so it's easy. Surrey schools. This is my So, yes, please send me an email of your address so that we can actually send the gifts directly to you. And of course, thank you to everyone who joined us. Devika, did you manage? So, I fired the link into the uh, chat already. So, it's very rudimentary. Yeah, it's just the same format as the diversity one. Um, there's no extra information <laughs> at this point, but I'm sure once it's all done up, that it will be great. Um, but yes, so it's uh, book title, author, uh, age range, and reason that you recommend it. Yes. So, if you could do us a favor and open up that Google Doc and pop in your book or your resource that you wanted to share with everybody, we'll make sure that we post this on our website as well so that people have access to this. All right. So anyone with the link is an editor, which means that Tammy or Christy or whoever wants to edit this further, um, you guys have that access as well. Okay, awesome. Okay, and that's pretty much it. I just wanted to remind everybody that our next meeting is actually on Thursday, May 27th which is Indigenous Peoples Month that we're planning for, which, is, which happens in June. Um, so please uh, mark your calendar so that you can join us on that day as well. And then uh, Donnie will be taking the lead on that day to talk about some ideas to share. Yes, all right. So that brings the end of our webinar. Thank you so much for joining us. And we're very happy that you all attended. Thank you, Tammy, for putting this together and doing so much work. This is great. Thank you. Um, lots of thank yous from a lot of people in the chats um, earlier as well to the student and Ravinder and just you guys all did a fantastic job. So thank you very much. All right. I am. I'm so glad I got all these extra people to do work for me. <laughs> Um, now, I'm not 100% if everyone in the chat got the link, so we may need to send it out to whoever you confirmed to this, because um, I know some people left early. Mm. No problem. Okay. Yes, I need you to want remember me to stuff. The like link, that. or do you have it and you're good? I just opened it, so okay. it should work. And it looks like people are putting stuff in. Yes. We're teacher librarians. We're very efficient. We're amazing at what we do. Yes, so it's kind of nice to have people share their ideas and stuff like that. Phew, okay, so that's done. Okay, remind me to never um, host chops anymore. <laughs> Sorry, I was, was doing something. I didn't unmute fast enough. Tammy, you did an amazing job. Yes. Absolutely. Um, Nothing to worry about. Sorry, I was also yeah. focused on the doc document. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Miller. You did a fantastic job, Tammy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, when you find out where everybody is that uh, that won, um, when you get like the addresses and stuff like that, if they're local, we can figure out maybe about dropping them too. So let me know. Anybody who's like, you know. New West Vancouver way. I could always do that too. Yes, it looks like Elena Miller is um, is Abbey Schools Abbotsford. You think? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's easy. That can be a drop off. Doesn't even need to be shipped out. Mm -hmm. And Lindsay, did you win the other one? I still see you there. Oh. Oh yeah, you're yeah. here, Lindsay. I'm still here. Um, <laughs> yes, I worked with Sam. Um, not too far from Donnie. So. Um, oh. Okay. Okay, yeah. West Van. Okay, that's easy too. I could probably just drop, we can just drop it off. Rather than if you want, we can coordinate. I think I'm going to be talking to Donnie about maybe dropping some t-shirts too, so. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah. great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> I'm excited. Yes. Oh, Lindsay, did you, um, 
Are you going to email me or should I email you for details? Um, I'll email you then I'll, yeah. Okay, are you, you got my email Are you on the link? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. great, thank you. Okay. Awesome, thank, thank you. you. I'm very excited. <laughs> okay. I mean, hey, for all you wonderful people out there, I have a question. Uh, we're still recording. You might want to stop the recording. Oh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> Just, that means 